So um, when I look at the summary here from the, the back of materials, you're looking at about 1.158 million, right, with for six houses to take care of this project, correct? Right. So that's about 193,000 then per house, correct? Right. Okay. When we did this program with the four houses um, the other year, what were we looking at from a total cost there and then per house then? Do you remember what that original grant was for those four? Um, this spring's buyout? Yeah, is it about the same number or so? A little Maybe. lower. Actually, it was a little lower. A little yeah, lower? They're smaller structures, I believe. Yeah. The value of the houses were in this grant. Right. And for the equation, for the cost to benefit ratio that you cited, um, mm -hmm. Ms. Sky, or Sue, for that one, how is how is that equation worked out for that ratio? Yeah, it's actually or Joel, if you have it. Yeah, I do. <coughs> the FEMA regs for the application identify, you turn in to them a, uh, uh, a listing of what the 100-year flood level is versus the true surveyed elevation of their low point of water entry to the house and what the lowest floor elevation is. And then they, they determine from historic values of um, flood insurance claims along with uh, some other um, factors. They call them um, avoided damages. In other words, bene benefits to them are future avoided damages such as loss of wages due to your house being flooded, loss of rental income, Avoided casualties such as injuries or illnesses, death. Uh, avoiding physical damages to uh, vehicles, uh, building contents, and, and on and on. So it, it's something that I didn't personally calculate, but I sent in the data that would be supporting for Springfield officials uh, by EMA to, to make that uh, calculation. So, when, and I appreciate that. Um and that's how it's determined everything. So when I look at those previous buyouts where those four houses are located, the three on Colby Court and the one on Taylor Street, right? Right. Why, why aren't the other lots that are right next to the Kishwaukee River, why wouldn't those be considered higher priorities than ones that are, you know, way off the river? They're single-level slab homes, those that are closest to the river that didn't have basements. Maybe they had crawl spaces. And the water, floodwaters would be lapping at their stoops but in most cases didn't enter the house or if it did it was wet carpeting and and some cabinets and and flooring that was damaged so they didn't have huge claims that would inflate so that's interesting a house that's right on the river right doesn't have much water so it must be running in between they're the houses and going to these other low they're points they're totally surrounded you couldn't actually get to those homes and live in them during the flood event with high water and and lots of these residents were displaced but they weren't so damaging with their contents. Yeah. If we had to, could we determine from a priority schedule, if we only have the 90000 that's there potentially for this grant to receive some funding, could we determine two of the houses um, that were higher priority right now of the, of the six that are being proposed? Right. The yeah, if the we can't come up with the 289000 extra dollars, right, we could probably determine, okay, of these six that we're considering and proposing right now, these are the two highest priority that we need to take care two of. Two highest priority, one would be on Fairmont and one would be on Don that have the highest... Uh, highest priority. So when we purchase these homes, and so what happens then? You, you go in, you buy these homes, and then you just... Demolish it. Demolish it, and then just put some grass there then? In this case, uh, Lions Park has been expanding mm -hmm. with open space. And then also another point, too, that the, the mayor, and, that, and then that, I'm sorry, and then just go back with that then. So if you buy that potential home there on Fairmont or, or uh, Don Court, right, then all of a sudden the park district then takes care of that or the city of DeKalb <coughs> then maintains that space then? Well, presently, city of DeKalb <coughs> maintains, for instance, the buyouts we had just done this spring on Colby, mowing grass, that sort of thing. Um, the ones that are most convenient and attached to Lions Park, we have over time negotiated and, and willingly the park district has taken on those, including the mowing. So it, it is more open space and beauty for, for expansion of the park, and I guess some days more picnic tables will go into that space and fancy recreation. 